The subject on, uh, on this speaking with tongues, it's an issue with the Pentecostal people. And I've had quite a, an affair. I don't, I don't make any issues on the platform because now I'm, I'm sponsored by different groups. And as a, as a Christian gentleman, I certainly would not want to hurt anybody. I, if they're Christian enough to have me at their place and their people staying there, I, I want to be brother enough to say nothing about it, see. And I just preach the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and, and then when they, uh, when, let them do what they wish to over there. Now, I do believe that spirit-filled people, see, sometimes get so filled with the Holy Ghost so they don't have any, uh, any control of their own language. I, I believe that. Sometime or another it happens. Or it's happened to me, it's happened to others, and, but you see, the thing it is, the Holy Spirit first has to be in there. See what I mean? It has to be in there first. See? It's just like if um, speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, if I was a, a boy and I was in a, uh, am I under the tutorship of my father and mother, and uh, you wanted to adopt me, and uh, I give you my knife. And you got my gift, but not me. Okay? Now, tongues is a gift of the Holy Ghost. There's no scripture in the Bible that says it is the Holy Ghost. It's a gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, what? On Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, because they were marveling, because we heard every man speaking in his own language where he was born. See? And they said, if you would repent, you would receive that gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, the gift of William Brandon is not... William Brown. See? Now, if you'll notice, you say, well, the gift of God is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God. They so say, you couldn't use it there, Mother. The, everything that I speak of, it must line with the Scripture. I, I won't receive it. Now, I only receive when he tells me that uh, uh, he always curses it with the Scripture. If he didn't, I would not believe it. Although, as much as he told me along the road, still, if he ever told me anything wasn't scriptural, it would not be right. Because the scripture is absolutely our basis. We cannot base our our salvation upon sensations, our experiences of others, or on our own experience. It's got to be the word of God. See? Well, that's the, that's the true mark. Now, as when I first began, <clears throat> in this debate that Brother Leo was anxious to get on tape here, I suppose I see it flickering, I guess he's got it running now. Um, I would not uh, want you, Brother Leo, to use this to hurt or anything, but just I know you wouldn't, and I wouldn't say to you, brother, if a man speaks with tongues, all right. If he doesn't speak with tongues, that still is no sign he hasn't got it. And if he, I've seen people speak with tongues like pouring peas on a dry cow hide, just as hard as they could go, and live with another man's wife. I've seen witches drink blood out of a human skull and call on the devil and speak in tongues. I've seen witches and Indian magic men, one of the bull ants, come in and they would uh, sit around in this big circle and they would uh, get out and do all their enchantments and the devil doctor would come in and they'd go around and around and do all this jumping up and down and screaming and beating on these tom-toms and and then the witch doctor would come in and speak in tongues and interpret it to him. See? And I've been in camps of witches where I walked in myself and it was so you if this is not advised for you to go to one. <laughs> but as a minister, I must know what I'm talking about, not taking somebody else's word because it's, uh, I, I must know it personally myself. See? Because I can't say 
Brother Jones said this. I read this in a book. I've got to know what I'm speaking about because there's too many people that listen to me, and I certainly don't want to come down on that last day with a bunch of people lost. I must know absolutely before I say anything about being the truth. And I think every minister owes that to his congregation, the people he preaches to, on any subject is to be sure that he knows what he's speaking about before he says anything. And um, so uh, uh, I've been in camps where the spiritualists were or come a piano with a half a ton lift up off the floor and a guitar lay in the room come through strumming music and everything like that and a coat hang on the wall come through and sit down and share those side and knives and forks coming through and see him, the wizard lay a lay a, um, a piece of paper down take a pencil and lay on top of it and see the spirit come and run up a soul pipe and come back down playing shave and a haircut two bits and write in unknown tongues and this medium stack pull itself all together like that and interpret these up and down like that and tell it, and and uh, interpret those tongues, and tell what was said. So you can't say that speaking in tongues, you got the Holy Ghost. Because I, I know better than that. Now if you notice, let's apply it sensibly, see, so that you'll understand. And that's why I want to do this, because I realize I'm talking to an intelligent man. So, uh, in the scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, it said, uh, there was there's nine spiritual gifts. Well then, tongues was one of those gifts in the body of Christ. Say, let's just so for an illustration and uh, make it simple. I know you catch it, but let's be sure that you get it. This this room is the body of Christ, and by one spirit we are baptized into this room, and in this room is the gift of a chair to relax. There's a gift of light. There's a gift of heat control. There's the gift of a rocker. There's the gift of a lounge. The gift of a rug. There's the gift of a picture. See what I mean? There's gifts. But how do you get into that body? By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. And then subject to any of these gifts. See? So, if speaking in tongues, then, is an evidence of the Holy Ghost, all these other things have to be evidence of the Holy Ghost, too. You have to do all these other things, these others. Prophesy, interpret, have wisdom, knowledge. But then Paul goes on to fix that, see? That do all speak with tongues? No. Do all have the gift of interpretation? But God has set in the church severally. See, he, he just picks it up like that. Man, that's the 12th chapter. Now, if you go on over to where I struck my debate to take my, the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost, I took it to be love. And the other man taking it to speak with tongues. See, to have tongues as the evidence. Now, Paul said it in 1 Corinthians 13, the next. He said, uh, Now, that uh, though I speak with tongues of man and angels, that's both kinds, and have not love, I have nothing. Though I have wisdom, now he's talking about these gifts up here in the body, see, have these gifts without the giver, see, love, see. Though I have wisdom and understand all knowledge of God, all the scriptures, can put them together like any great theologian, and have not love, which is the Holy Spirit. I am nothing. Now, we know that the Holy Spirit is God. We have to admit that. See, that's God. Well, then, God is love. See? So you can have any of the gifts of God without having God. God, love, and Satan can impersonate any of those gifts. See? He can impersonate pretty much anything because he perverts. Sin is righteousness perverted. So, in the debate, the gracious brother, he, uh, him being the visitor, I said, now, I'm willing to discuss this with you if you will stay strictly with the scripture and don't leave the scripture. And I said, then, at the end of the discussion, if you can shake my hand and we'll still feel brothers one another, because if you don't, I wouldn't do it. See, I said, 
because perhaps when it's over, you're going to feel the same way you do, and I will too. But then we got uh, moderators here that sworn businessmen, you know, and so forth. That they just, they're just, they're not interested in either side. They're just taking down what's facts, no matter what their decision is. It's just is five or six men just on certain scripture when this scripture is given. Who takes it? Who really throws the light on it? That's more it tells you. See. So he started off as usual. Acts 2 and, and 4, you know, that, uh, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Well, <clears throat> I, and then he went from there to, to, uh, to uh, Acts uh, 1049, or while Peter had spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word. Well then, uh, and then he went over to Acts 19.5, and Paul laid his hand on him, and the Holy Ghost come on him and spoke in tongues. So that taken up most of his time, and then it was my time. We was from about 7 o'clock till about 2 in the morning. See. So um, <clears throat> it was lengthy. So um, then when he come back, he had about 30 or 35 minutes on that. And then uh, they rest the people, and then let me speak again. Let me speak. So... I never left his scriptures. I stayed right with his scripture. That's the only way he can correctly, sensibly. I'm just as open to know what's truth as anybody else. I certainly don't want to be wrong. And I better be right here because it's too late when I get there. You see, you want to, the old colored brother says, I don't want no trouble at the river. <laughs> so that's right. I, I want it. It's going to be a foggy morning and an awful time. And I sure want my ticket in my hand. It correctly signed. Oh, I don't want too late then. See. So, and I, in discussing anything, I go at it to learn something. I want to know. And uh, if I'm wrong, I certainly want to know that I'm wrong. See, so I can be right. I wish I could agree upon those things and make it a universal feeling. But I, I, I'm just, if it's wrong, it's just wrong. There, you, there's no black, white bird or drunk, sober man. See, that. It's either right or it's wrong. It, 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 you can't have error and truth together. It's either truth or it's error. See, you believe that, don't you, brother? Yes. Yeah. It's, it, if the Scripture's right, then let's yeah. stay with the Scripture. And if the Church is right, then that's what I said to them priests. I said, if the Church is right, stay with the Church. He said, well, the Church is right. I said, then you said that the Church, at the, at the Bible here, is the uh, history of the first Church. Well, if it is, then it's the infallible church. Why have you changed so much, you see? And that showed his argument out there, you see. I said, you said Christ organized the Catholic Church. See? If he organized the Catholic Church, and Apostle Peter and all of them were the first Catholics, well, then I, I'm Catholic too, then. I say it's exactly what they said. Yeah. Well, you're so far off out here, you see. I said, you don't have anything they said. See? Why, Peter said the first Pope said there's no mediator between God and man but Christ Jesus, the only mediator. And now you've got tens of thousands of them. I said, now which is the first pope right or this pope? Which one's right? And he said, well, you see, the Catholic Church has power. I said, well, then when did the first Catholic say, in, in writing it, said, if an angel from heaven come preaches any other gospel, let him be accursed. Whether he be a pope or a priest or whatever he may be, and whosoever taketh away or adds to this book, the same will be taken. I said, you're all mixed up somewhere, sir. Either your first church is right or this one's right. And if your first one is right, this one's wrong. See, and I said, I'll stay with the first Catholic. And that way they were Catholic. So, you see, you've got to be right. We only, to hold a, a, a discussion, you have to come back to something basically you can lay your hands on. Because you have just as much right to your belief as you believe in everybody else. But we've got to come back. There's got to be somewhere to start from. Somewhere to say, this is it. Of course, you can't debate other words. See, if we both, I said, well, the Brown Tabernacle's right, and you say, he says, uh, the, the, uh, the, you say the Anglican Church is right in England, and, and, uh, he's, uh, what they? I'll be Armenian. Yeah, let him be Armenian and so forth, you know, and you take the Dutch Reform. Well, now, where are we going to? Now, there's got to be some place. Well, you can go back and quote your catechisms and all of this and so forth. We only go back to the church to our, our found, founders where we found that, but where are we basing is that? See, there's got to be somewhere that's right. It's like a principle that you're speaking on in, in Parliament. 
you got to have something that's right. You got you got to lay out there and show the people. And you got to have some place to start from. Well, that's the way we have to do the Bible. So I come back to the uh, question of Acts two with him. And I said, now you um, you say that uh, Acts two is where you're going to um, to uh, base it upon. So I had to give him something to run him off the run him off the, the line, so he could be uh, and he could uh, I could speak to him, you know, be him short. Of, I said, now we'll we'll basic if you. Well, thank you. If you will just, we'll stay with the scripture. I said, now, brother, I, I admire your stand. And I said, you you said here that uh, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. This is all noise for all. They came together and were confounded because they heard every man speaking in his own language wherein they were born. I had to leave him off to him. I said, now, uh, <clears throat> Brother, I'd like to ask you this. Now remember, the Bible uh, says that these unbelievers, it didn't say now that these people, see, appear to come down from the tower, from up in the upper room in the building. It said they were uh, all filled with the Holy Ghost and these out here, they were hearing them in their own tongue where they were born. They heard them. Each man. See? The sinners was hearing them in their own tongue where they were born. The unbelievers. And uh, I said then, if your Pentecostal interpretation is right, see, what you got now, I said, then there's something either wrong with Acts 2 or wrong with your interpretation. I said, now I want to ask you, brother, uh, where did you receive the Holy Ghost at? He told me the minute hour, good man. And he, a uh, little, Ear, you know, kind of a little worked up because under sweat. There's no reason for that. See, if I got a rabbit pinned up in a field, and not a way in the world for him to get out, I'll snap the gate, he's got to come back. Well, he ain't getting out, so you don't have to sweat it out. If you know exactly, you know there's not a hole in the world for him to get out in. So you can stay right there if he wants to. you want to. You've got to come back to it. So he ain't, he ain't going over there. You don't have to chase him all around the field. Just stand there and come back to you. So then I said, um, uh, sir, I said, um, now, how did you act when you received the Holy Ghost? He said, Praise God, I spoke in other tongues to the Spirit, give them nothing. I said, uh, all right. So who all was there? It's about 150 people. You're in a church. Yes, sir. And uh, were they all English-speaking people? Yes. I said, um, then how did you uh, speak? He said, uh, I spoke in tongues. I said, uh, in your speaking, you gave testimony of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. That you received the Holy Ghost. Yes. Did the congregation understand you? He said, uh, well, no. <laughs> I said, that wasn't according to Acts 2 and 4. <laughs> I said, because... Every man heard in his own language where he was born. There was no words mixed at all. Every man heard in his own language where he was born. I said, then you surely never got it, according to Acts 2 and 4. That knocked that scripture right there from the modern years gave it to me. I said, now on the day of Pentecost, they, everyone heard in his own language. There was no mincing at all. He said, oh, I see where you're mixed up, Brother Brandon. He said, you see... The, the Holy Ghost, when it first comes, he said, there is a, we speak in the tongue of angels, you see. He said, there's, there's no interpretation to that. But then when you get interpretation, he said, then there's a tongue that can be interpreted, and some of them is Paul said. I said, yes, sir, I understand that. I said, then, uh, you mean to tell me then, sir, that, that when we receive the Holy Ghost, that's a tongue that no man understands. See, when we speak in tongues, when we're receiving the Holy Ghost, he said, that's it. 
And then after we get baptized and into the body, then we receive a tongue that uh, if they can be interpreted. See, is that it? Yeah. I said, then you got the cart before the horse. See? I said, then you got the here. See? I said, then on the day of Pentecost, when they receive the Holy Ghost, they receive it different from you all. I said, you all receive it, nobody understands it. When they receive it, everybody understood it. And I said, you know, these guys had the gift out there to interpret. See? And I said, then if you give them the gift of interpretation, then they had the Holy Ghost too because they had interpretation. They said, you got the gift of thinking. And they were mocking, making fun of them. <laughs> There's no grounds for them. And so, and I said, what if I told you that God did something to these men? If they, these, everyone uh, heard them in their own tongue, he said, but they were speaking tongue. And I said, just a minute, brother. The unbeliever out there said, Behold, not all these Galileans which are speaking? And how do we hear them, every man in our own tongue, when we were born? These that are speaking are Galileans, speaking Galileans. But we are hearing them in our own language, wherein we were born. See, you couldn't stand over that. I said, now, they said, now I said, I'm, I, that could have been that way. I said, I've seen that happen. A little Spanish girl one time, I was telling you about it, I guess they heard it on the tape, you know. And um, so um, I said, now we, uh, uh, I was speaking just like I am now, and she was hearing me. And, just, and, and she said to the interpreter, I thought he couldn't speak Spanish. Well, we played the tape back, and it was English. But she, when the inspiration is on, she heard it in Spanish, and then she couldn't hear one, but didn't understand one word in English. See? So as far as I told her all about what she had, an epilepsy, and she sat by the fireplace eating yellow corn, eat too much, and got violently sick, went to bed, and stored her into an epileptic fit. He's had him ever since. See. So then she was healed. So he said, well, now, just a minute. He said, they were, I see, or you, and I said, I just wonder, brother, why that when you was given this question, I said, you were speaking of Acts 2 and 4, and then you went to Acts 10, 49. I said, how did you leave out Acts 8? The one the Samaritans received the Holy Ghost. There's not a scripture saying that they spoke in tongues. Well, I said, I said, if you notice, at Jerusalem, there were gathered, I'm taking your side of it now, see, I said, there were gathered men from all nations, both head and tail, Medes and Persians and, and proselytes and strangers and Macedonians. Oh, you know, all like that where they were. I said, so now they were all, they were all there. And uh, they heard them, every man in his own language. And I said, now, and at the house of Cornelius. And I said, when they spoke in tongues there, they heard in their own language. The same thing they did back here. I said, because... That Peter said, we refuse water, seeing that these receive the Holy Ghost like we did at the beginning. I said, God will never change his program. If you'll stand right here on Acts 2, right here where the Holy Ghost first fell, it'll, it'll cooperate with the rest of it. I said, now, if it's so essential, why didn't the Samaritans speak with him when they received the Holy Ghost? I said, because they all spoke Jewish. <laughs> See, they all spoke Jewish. There's no need for them to have another tongue. Because they're just testifying the Holy Ghost to come. They're all speaking in their language to everyone. And, um, and I said, uh, and uh, there was no reason for it. I said, there's the three tribes. See, the Jews, Samaritans, and Gentiles. And I said, now the Gentiles, if you remember, Cornelius was a centurion, over a hundred men, a band of Italians. And there was a circumcision, and, and uh, Romans, and Italians, and, and all, all together there. And however it was, he was speaking because just like it did at the beginning, how can we forbid water seeing this has received the Holy Ghost like we did at the beginning? So you see, it had to be the same way it was at the beginning and every man had to hear in his own tongue. I said, I'll admit that there was one time that in the Bible that everyone spoke in tongues. But he was very upset, you know, and he said, hallelujah, now you're on the road. I said, yes, sir, that was a dad, but no one understood what the other one said. I said, I said, I said on Pentecost, they all understood what every man said. I said, 
through the outweighing of the Holy Spirit, you see. And I said that Babylon, they all spoke in unknown tongues like Pentecost does now. No one know what the other thing. One jabber this, one jabber that, and they didn't know nothing. But that was Babylon. See? But I said at Pentecost, every man heard in his own language where he was born. And he said, well, I, I, you, I still believe the glory of God I received. Hallelujah. It makes the church stronger. I said, now, wait, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Bible doctrine. We stay with the scripture. And, um, and so then, uh, as we went on, he said, well, he said, uh, well, I believe they all was under inspiration speaking in tongues. He said, I don't believe they heard them from interpretation. I believe they were inspired speaking in tongues. I said, I'll agree with you with that. And we'll finish our debate upon that. See? That they were all inspired speaking in tongues. And I said, now, see, it's just like I said, we're all gathered here in Jeffersonville. We're all gathered here in Yakima. The Feast of Pentecost is on. And I said, now we're going to say that you're Swiss, you're German, and you're French. See? And we're all in here, and each one of you is a group of people. Now, uh, say this, myself and uh, Brother Borders and Brother Gene sitting here. And we're all Americans. See? And you got a group, you got a group, you got a group called, that's the way they was. They were me, Persians, and a lot more together there. And I said, now we are, we're all here, and all of a sudden, there comes a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. It fills the house in here, not out there with you all. And I sure we were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And we come outside, and uh, first thing you know, here, uh, I'm English, and I go to speaking in English way at first thing. And you understand it, it's Swiss. Oh, no. No, no. He said, no. You were speaking in, in, uh, in in your, I said, then, if it was, then what am I telling him? Of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Of the coming of the Holy Ghost? See, I said, I, I'm speaking to you, Swiss, while Gene is speaking to you in German. And Roy is speaking to you in French. See? And he said, uh, I said, then, uh, he said, now, now you're, you're pretty close to it. I said, pretty close to it. I said, that's what the scripture said. We're hearing every man in our own language wherein we were born. He said, uh, oh, and the, the moderators, I done seen it. I done chalked up on the board, everyone so far, you know. So I said, we'll finish up this. And he, uh, he said, uh, and, and I said, then they were, were all speaking, understanding one another, which I don't have that if it captured in the first place. They had to understand their language. See, Babylon was the only time they didn't understand. Pentecost, they understood every man. If the gospel must go to all the world beginning at Jerusalem and struck the whole world at that time, the known world right there. See? It had to come like that because, see, all the nations under heaven was gathered there. The religious nations. It was Pentecost. See? And he struck the whole world. We're going to all the world beginning at Jerusalem. See? So it had to be testified in language of the resurrection of Christ so it would go to all the world right there. See? And these carriers here, these people in your worshippers, will go back into their country like few days after that, the Ethiopian going down, you know, and Philip was down to Samaria, and the Ethiopian is only going back to Africa, the eunuch, and the Holy Spirit called Philip from that big meeting, made him stand in the desert. He's reading Isaiah. He said, what read this now? He said, how can I know it's not man teach me? He said, who is, the, who is the prophet speaking of himself? Or he'd been up there to think also worship, see? So he baptized him right there in the name of Jesus. He went on to Ethiopia. Rejoicing, taking the message to Ethiopia. That's where it was supposed to be. To go at now. Here comes the. Um, here, here it was. I said now. Uh, so I said, you see, sir, that even the moderators was already chalked up there. That they they spoke in languages that everyone understood. There was not one word missed. See, so your version of Pentecost has already been condemned. See, because you have to put your version of Pentecost in bad one because you can't put it in Acts 2 and 4. See? Because they heard every man in his own language where he was born, and at Babylon, no one understood nothing. So you see, your Pentecostal version is already back in Genesis again in Babylon. See? So you're not up here in Pentecost anymore. Now I said, but let's just carry it to a little farther. See? Of course, it already gave to us, you see there. So everywhere you go in the Bible, it's got to come back like it did at the beginning. God is infinite and cannot change. He said, well, they, uh, then he started on with the rest of them. 
He said, now, you will admit, old Brother Branham, that these men coming out of here just wasn't like Methodists or Baptists. See, that's uh, throwing off to my Baptist thing. But they're not, they had received and were speaking under inspiration. I said, yes, sir. I'll agree with that. So they, Mark that. I'll agree that they, they were speaking under inspiration, what they were saying. I said, every time I preach, I preach the same way, don't you? I'm the English, you know, but the inspiration. I <laughs> saw that. <laughs> but again, I said, every time I preach or prophesy, it's not no known tongue. Paul says it didn't have interpreted this, it was nothing like a barbarian. It's got to be for edification and so forth. So that knocked that out for me, you see. I said, well, he said, uh, and I said, uh, well, I'm agreeing, and it was all under inspiration. I said, now, now, like this, I said, some of them, uh, uh, now, I said, like we were, I said, those then who were speaking in Galilee, to the Galileans, they were under inspiration, wasn't they? Like if we're all English. He said, there's none of them Galilee. I said, it was in Galilee. And there were all Galileans that were speaking. There were Galileans out here because they were in Galilee. That was in the national language. I said, then this man come out and he spoke to the Galileans in their native tongue, and he was Galilean. So it's like I'm English speaking to the Englishman in the English speak, and he didn't have it. <laughs> well, he said it might have uh, uh, fell on one and the other. They just divided it up. Maybe this one here would come speak to them. Well, I said then after the four Galileans, they didn't hear him. <laughs> I said he wasn't inspired then when he was speaking to them of the resurrection. <laughs> he wasn't a place to stand anymore. <laughs> And we just went on like that. Like, we just toned the scriptures down, right? Toned right on down like that. See, it'll have to come back to that originally first. See? So you see, it, there, it isn't speaking in an unknown tongue. It's speaking under inspiration. See? And like if I received the Holy Ghost here this morning, in a mix you all, I would be under inspiration telling you the resurrection and the Holy Ghost has come to me under inspiration. Now see, tongue is not the Holy Ghost. See? He said, then you don't believe in speaking in tongues. I said, definitely I do. I believe in speaking in tongues. Now I said, it's the least among the gifts, the gifts according to which recorded in the Bible, because it's the last gift. See? I said, and a fellow would speak with tongues, but first he's got to have the Holy Ghost before he, he speaks with tongues. If he isn't, he's an impersonator. Now I said, then he could speak with, uh, with tongues, as you said, both of man and of angels, and still not have the Holy Ghost. I said, because Paul said, though I speak, though I can, speak with tongues of man and of angels, and have not carried on nothing. Though I can understand all knowledge, and can interpret the scriptures exactly right, without this baptism, I know nothing. I give my goods to feed the poor, and my body to be burned as a sacrifice, and faith to move mountains, and I'm nothing. I ain't started yet. See? I have all this faith, I said, now that answer's like Dr. Agri up there that time, you know, about Luther and Dean, you know, and I told him, you remember the debate that we had, you know, there on the, on about the, um, uh, he told me about that witch woman, you know, that prayed for the sick and they got healed and said, God couldn't heal you for it. Yeah. See, you know, that thing. I said, well, sure. We have all these men come up and say, brother, I got healed in my hand. <laughs> See, they don't. But the people get healed just the same. Because it's on the basis of faith. And the fellow thinks he's approaching God that way. Now, I believe many people get the Holy Ghost. See? When he come out there speaking with tongues, I believe it's the Holy Ghost. But that's no evidence they got it. Their life last week, some of them come out of there and, and you heard my vision, I guess you heard on my tape about how that when I went to Mishawaka that time, and those people coming out there, you know, and the colored boy said, yeah, he is, yeah, he is, you know. Okay. Well, you remember, they had one man there speaking in tongues and another interpreter. I heard it before my life. And uh, if I told you, you stopped. So then, uh, but this fellow lost the debate. You know, of course, there's a lot more, but you see what I'm talking about. See, come right back to the beginning. See, right back to the beginning. There's many of these people who are speaking in tongues and feel they have the baptism, but they, they really haven't. haven't got it. They've made a conception yeah. of it, but they, they haven't they've got it. See, when the true Holy Spirit comes in, it's the life of Christ see, that lives in the heart of the human being. See? And they never said a word about Jesus speaking with tongues when he received the Holy Ghost. Now, how about John the Baptist? He received the Holy Ghost six months before he was born in his mother's womb. How did he speak with tongues? 
What about the deaf and the dumb? Yeah, how could he speak with tongues if he couldn't speak or hear? How about Elizabeth and Mary? When they, Elizabeth, the mother of John, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied Satan. Not speaking in tongues. <laughs> so they, they haven't got, they died talked to some of their main leaders, you know, and the main more and, and intelligent people will, will admit that, you see, but they, um, but the, what they say, it's all, uh, that's the doctor of the church, you see. That's what you want to go do about it. But there you are, you know, or what you did, I changed that out of the of the organization.